Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, sorry for the last minute. Um, welcome to my talk about building a marketing tool, your marketing tool, source of You are me, I'm Bart Salm, I'm an architect at other gear company here present with company. Um, I've been involved in several open source things since uh, 2014. Um, doing some open source work for the government in, in Belgium and uh, also some contribute some seek and plugins. Okay, yeah, thank you. Um, my company, Geo Solutions, we were founded in 2004 and we are a consulting company doing consultancy assignments and, and just some projects mainly around location and geospatial data. So uh, what was this case and then I want to talk about, I want to talk about our journey to use uh, source tools to uh, make a game geomarketing tool actually for a client of us. Um, it's maybe a little bit different than some of the talks here um, because this is really about some commercial uses, the usage. Uh, so what was the geomarketing case? Um, this was about a, a company who distributes uh, like these advertisement uh, brochures really going from bus to bus, house to house. They still exist in the digital age. <laughs> so, uh, and they have quite uh, some uh, distribution sectors, which is like the, the a geographical boundary in which uh, a certain guy or woman will distribute the brochure. So it's made of routes that are optimized for them to distribute, like, a bit like the mailman, like the postman, um, to distribute these brochures. So what they wanted to do is uh, create a tool where um, their clients could select uh, an area where they want to distribute these brochures and um, like uh, use def different parameters to select this. Of course you have the classic stuff like, okay, you can select certain cities or certain provinces or even a region or language areas because in Belgium you have multiple uh, language areas where actually three official languages in Belgium so but then also some other points so you could also upload uh, points of interest into the system like the franchise if you are maybe a supermarket and you have like 50 stores around the entire country and you want to upload them so you can distribute your brochures just around the the franchise like maybe a 10 kilometer radius around these uh, franchises or you can upload certain points of interest that you could base your campaign on so like if you want to distribute your, uh, brochures in the neighborhood of certain so shopping malls or other landmarks or can be anything actually and then uh, they also wanted to use some statistical data so we used some um, open data here um, to yeah, select uh, different sectors based upon data, like uh, the average age of people. If you only want to target young people, if if your company that's distribute the, the brochure is only targeting young people, or maybe only elderly people, or people with some higher income, or only families. If you're a toy store, maybe you want to only target areas where there are lots of families and not where there are lots of singles, um, and this kind of stuff. So, to get some uh, some data, um, we took a look at uh, the open data that's available uh, at the Belgian uh, statistical uh, institution uh, called Stadbel. Uh, it's a Belgian national institution, um, and they have this concept of uh, statistical sectors, which you see on the map over there. It's an example of how they are distributed a bit in a in a village. Um, and for these sectors you can get all kind of data sets so like you have these large tables with all kinds of data and they all, all have this code uh, an NIS code it's called and you can link that to a specific sector so you can see what the average income in a sector or you can get data about family size or you can combine several data sets to get some data about this sector um,
then of course there was a, a bit of a problem there because you see the statistical sectors they're kind of different shape and they're a bit uh, about the density of the population I think in the area it's made uh, and they're managed by the Bel Belgian federal government so you, you can't change anything about that and then we also had the distribution sectors which was managed by another department in the company who just optimized these sectors for distribution not for actually the marketing itself but they, they only cared about what's the best way to distribute these brochures so they had these these sectors we couldn't also change them of course uh, and they were managed by a totally different department so um, I made an example here the, the the statistical sectors are the red ones they they are the real sectors uh, the blue one is an example of how a distribution sector would look like. So you see it's optimized more for a distribution where a guy does a tour to distribute his, his brochures uh, and he doesn't have to cross the railway in, in, in the top of the picture because the statistical sector in the top goes across the railway but there is no railway uh, crossing there. So yeah, for distribution this is not very good. Um, and so a lot of other things. So we had to come up with some way of uh, mapping this statistical data to determine whether a distribution sector should be selected for distribution of this folder or not for this campaign or not. So at first we filtered all the uh, statistical sectors based on the attributes you wanted to select. So if you for instance, only want to select uh, families and you want, only want to distribute folders to uh, areas which have a large amount of families. Um, and then we went to look, um, okay, which of these uh, sectors uh, then intersects with uh, certain distribution sectors. Then we looked, okay, if, it's, uh, if a certain statistical sector is completely covered by uh, this um, distribution sector and this sector is then of course one which has a lot of families in it then we select also this distribution sector to have okay there is a, at least one statistical sector in uh, in there which uh, has a lot of families um, maybe this is not a very good example because actually the sector is quite small compared to the distribution sector but as you see most of the population in this sector will probably be in these smaller sectors, so I think it's still uh, quite okay. And then we also looked at, okay, what if uh, a sector is not completely covered by, how are we going to determine if we're going to select the, the distribution area or not? So um, then we looked at, yeah, okay, how much of the area of the statistical sector is actually in the distribution sector to determine whether it was going to be selected or not. So uh, we used another post his function here to determine the area uh, compared to the area of the uh, distribution sector and if there is a certain percentage of overlap then uh, this would also be selected. Okay, a little bit about uh, the architecture we built for this. Um, so, the, on the far uh, right side you see uh, there's the company APIs, which is uh, the platform which contains all the distribution sectors and so on, and some information about our clients. Um, we had a database, which was a Postgres database with PostGIS installed. So as you saw on the previous slides, we used a lot of uh, PostGIS functions to calculate uh, this uh, distribution stuff. Um, so we had a, a sector processing uh, service set up, which is uh, in Java with uh, use of Hibernate Spatial to uh, query the PostGIS database. Uh, we had a separate uh, GeoServer set up, which was in this case only used for displaying data so um, you could uh, display on the map several data about okay you could display the statistical sectors the distribution sectors but also like the, just the, the villages or uh, the provinces or other uh, administrative boundaries uh, the top okay the business service was just uh, 
everything that was made for this uh, this project in business wise business processing um, and then the actual application in the front end uh, which uses uh, angular and uh, open layers for uh, use uh, for displaying the map and controlling uh, map stuff actually uh, yeah there was also some authentication service but I'm not going to talk too much about that um, for using a geo server in in because what you saw on the previous slides all of these uh, services were actually packaged as uh, dockers docker containers so we could uh, run this uh, in production, it's run in Kubernetes and uh, for development it's using uh, Docker Compose. So uh, one of the things we had to do was getting some GeoServer in Docker and with our previous work with uh, GeoServer, we always used the, the admin tool like the, the graphical user interface of GeoServer to configure it and to set up some stuff. But in this case, this wasn't very practical because we wanted to have some automated deployments in production uh, and also on the, on the testing environment. So this wasn't very feasible. So we looked into, okay, how does GeoServer uh, stored, source this uh, information? And then we looked at the data directory of, uh, of GeoServer where uh, you have yeah, this kind of stuff. And then, uh, we looked at uh, in ways to package this in a, a Docker container, so we could have a fully configured Geo server uh, ready uh, and automatically deployed without having to use the, the user interface for this. Uh, so we created this uh, this Docker file, which uses okay, it's a Tomcat. Okay, we deployed the the Geo server into it. Um, and then okay, we made some some changes, but uh, the most important is uh, to make uh, the data directory where we actually had a pre-configured data directory ready in our source uh, environment, and then uh, moved it into the Docker file uh, into the Docker container um, at build time, so we could uh, actually very easily deploy uh, a Docker container containing uh, Geo Server. So uh, this is an overview of the open source projects we used. I already mentioned uh, we used PostGIS a lot for the calculation of uh, the stuff for the overlappings between uh, statistical sectors and distribution sectors. We use the open layers for actually displaying the map and having controls on the map so the user can interact with it. It is served for displaying administrative uh, boundaries on the map. Okay, I mentioned that uh, everything is packaged in Docker. Uh, we use Spring Boot to do this, uh, to build the actual services. Um, QGIS was used to uh, edit some of the data in the backend, so uh, to prepare the statistical data we had uh, into a nice data set. And yes, for us, we use some, some standard uh, Java stuff like uh, OpenGDK, Hibernate, and, and Tomcat. Um, to uh, build the application. So this is how the appli application then uh, actually looks. So uh, you see the, the map. Okay, it's uh, a Google Maps background. I will talk to, uh, about that in a minute. Um, you see actually the, the distribution sectors displayed on the map here um, and you see uh, two campaigns being created um, where uh, someone, a customer can create his uh, campaign what he wants to distribute. So the green and the red areas are two areas where different folders will be distributed in the campaign. Um, so you can actually see there is also an overlap it's also, um, yeah, okay, sorry, it's, it's in Dutch, the, the user interface, but um, as you can see, you well, also have a calculation if there is an overlap between areas because then actually two folders will be distributed in this uh, dark red area where uh, they overlap. And this is an example of uh, the filtered uh, area. So if there was first also some area selected as in the previous slide 
but then we applied these uh, filters we uh, made using the statistical data. So actually here you see within a selected area which distribution, distribution sectors actually have uh, families with children here. So uh, if you're maybe a toy store, you can use these kind of, of tools to get, okay, I only want to target families uh, with my data. And you see here also there's a different uh, administrative boundaries on it. because so now they're uh, showing the communities instead of uh, distribution sectors. Okay, what uh, could possibly be improved in onto this? I already mentioned the background is still in Google Maps and actually the way we use this is not supported by Google anymore. So um, this was a bit of a discussion with the client because they for some reason don't want to use uh, OpenStreetMap. I'm still arguing with them to actually use it because it would be a lot better than what you have now because it's no longer even supported by Google doing it this way. You have to actually implement their API and so on. So it makes it a lot, a lot more difficult. Um, also in there, uh, I didn't show it because it's a property solution and but there is also uh, a solution where you can select a point of interest and then calculate uh, drive time around the, the point of interest and use that as a base for select, selecting your uh, distribute the, the area where you want to distribute your folder. Uh, currently, this is a commercial uh, solution that's used, um, but we're investigating if there is any open source kind of uh, tool which can do this. So thank you. This was my talk. Uh, some links there. Any questions? So your question is, it, yeah. Yeah. It, it, one um, statistical center. No, we actually want to select the, the blue ones. So the, uh -huh. the actual distribution areas and we want to determine if in this distribution area, there is a lot of families maybe. So if, if this, sector uh, to, to actually see this because we don't have data about the distribution sector only about the statistical sector so we want to see if they overlap or if they at least a large part of them overlaps and then we consider the distribution area to also have a lot of families in it so then at the end um, the entire blue area would be let's say oh yeah the entire blue area would, would be, be selected because okay. that's the way they distribute uh, the stuff so. Do you get or did you get any feedback from the distribution centers that um, it really helps them? That, that, that uh, it's the tool is actually made for the customers of our customer, yeah. so it's to help them actually, and not yeah. really the distribution part no, of it. Sorry, sorry, because um, I mean they only gave us yeah. This is the sectors we so like the blue ones. They say uh, this is how we distribute it, and this is what you have to use. So. We didn't really optimize on that part, so maybe that's also something we can improve in the future to optimize that. Maybe this is not a statistically significant number of people, but... <laughs> One guy in the back. Is One guy in the back. Because I'm very curious about. Uh, uh, I'm looking at it right now, and how is it connected? Uh, like, for example, in the Geo server, uh, what are they called? Uh, definition files or something. So, can you actually connect your Docker? Uh, what is it called? Docker. It's not a virtual machine, but it's a Docker image. Yeah. To the to some kind of fixed disk which stays persistent over time. Uh, yeah, there are options to do that. Um, 
for this, we only had uh, the data is in the, actually in the database, so we had the database connection, and we only copied over the uh, configuration files to, uh, into the Docker container. Um, but you can actually also have data in the container, or you can attach like uh, drives to the container, or use a shared some sort of shared drive where you can put data and then have the Docker container access this data.